settlers first came to the North Shore here, um, there weren't, weren't really even roads up the shore, so they, they settled a lot of this area by boat. And uh, these small silver fish that they caught, many of these folks came from Norway, Sweden, Finland, uh, Scandinavian countries, and they were used to fishing. So they saw this large lake and they saw this rocky shoreline, very similar to what the, uh, they had experienced in Scandinavian countries. And so they started fishing and they caught these small silver fish, which looked to them kind of like herring. So that's where the name originated, Lake Herring. My name is Don Schreiner, and I'm the Area Fisheries Supervisor for Minnesota's portion of Lake Superior. Yeah, so we're talking about the same fish when we talk about Lake Herring, which is the traditional name uh, that both the uh, commercial netters and fisheries biologists used to use uh, for, the, for the fish that, uh, that we're calling now called Cisco. And the scientific name would be Corrigonus artidae, and that one hasn't changed. But they changed it from lake herring to cisco because people were getting confused that it was a herring similar to what we see in the Atlantic Ocean or the Pacific Ocean, and they aren't really even in the same family. So they felt like calling them cisco would be a, a better way to go, at least on the scientific front. But I think what it's done is just mostly confuse folks in the local scene here. So when I talk to a, a bi biologist, I call them Cisco. When I talk to our commercial netters, I usually refer to them as lake herring. So we're using some common language as far as the names go. Um, and I should mention that the Cisco or lake herring is not only a important commercial fish, but it is the uh, cornerstone for all the major predators in the lake, the lake trout um, and some of the salmonids out here. So it's, it's important for both commercial and for sport fisheries. Mm -hmm. One of the interesting things about the, the lake herring fishery is that it's supported by one or two large year classes and then there's a fairly long period of time before we have another large year class. And the year class is basically the year when a population of, of fish um, are born. And then that, that population then sustains the fishery for maybe five, 10 years. And so when netters are fishing this fishery, they're basically taking a portion of that fishery year after year, and there's not a lot of reproduction many times in between. So we have to be careful that we don't overfish that, that year class as we talk about in, in fisheries biology. Fisheries have for many years set quotas um, ocean fisheries and, and lake fisheries as well. Um, I think that the, the thing that we've done differently is rather than using a mathematical model or, uh, or historical information, we've been able to use the hydroacoustics to go out and actually estimate the catch. So we kind of know how big the pie is to begin with. And we now go out each summer and we do a survey with the hydroacoustics gear um, based on that survey, uh, we can estimate the number of fish or the number of pounds of, of cisco or lake herring out there. And then we've uh, worked with the commercial netters and what we've agreed to is to allow them to catch 10% of what we call the spawning stock biomass, which is the um, number of cisco or lake herring greater than 30 centimeters. We also work very closely with the University of Minnesota some of the fisheries biologists there that had expertise in the hydroacoustics technology. And um, by partnering with the commercial netters and with the university, we were able to come up with what we call a total allowable catch. It's basically a quota uh, that we set for the um, area that encompasses Minnesota. Uh, it's a portion of Lake Superior. Some of the information we've been finding recently is that um, since 19, um, 88, 89, and 90, those year classes have pretty much left the system. We had a strong year class in 98, which sustained the fishery um, up until the most recent years. And now what we're seeing is a couple smaller year classes, 2003, 2005 and most recently in 2009. Now they're probably about 10% of what the uh, um, 98 um, year class was 
So we're a little concerned. We're starting to see the, the numbers in our survey decline. Um, we see a little bit um, fewer fish being caught in the fishery. I think some of the fellows are having to work a little harder to catch the same numbers of fish. Um, and so we will adjust our quotas based on that. So far we've been lucky. Uh, one year we actually got very close to hitting our quotas, but in most years the commercial netters have not bumped up against that quota. Yeah, one of the things we've seen with Lake Superior is it's kind of returned to its historical conditions where we've got uh, um, Lake Herring or Cisco as the major prey base and Lake Trout as the major predators. Sea lamprey are under control uh, through the Sea Lamprey Control Program and uh, the lake itself seems to have uh, stabilized as far as the amount of fish that, that it's producing. Now my guess is that we will see fluctuations. You always expect to see some fluctuations uh, in abundance and my guess is we'll probably see um, Cisco or Lake Herring probably come back a little more. Uh, it seems like there's still more um, what we call mycids or, or prey for Lake Herring out there. Um, so a couple strong year classes and we may be back up to about what we can expect. I'm guessing that uh, for the most part the commercial uh, fishery for Lake Herring at least in Minnesota here and based on the market is probably about you know where we'll see it. We're right now our quotas come in around 500,000 to 750,000 pounds. That's about where we're at. That's probably about where we'll stay. So I think that it's been kind of a win-win for uh, the commercial fishery. Those folks are able to fish when they couldn't otherwise have fished. It's a win for the sport fishery because we're able to keep um, prey out there at uh, the appropriate sizes. Uh, in, in the appropriate abundance to support a, a fairly large and very uh, successful lake trout fishery uh, and along with a few salmonids and it's uh, been good for the biologists such as myself because we can then show some pretty hard numbers as to why um, we are setting quotas where we are it's more of an active approach rather than a, a response to a, a a crash or a bad situation and I think everybody's uh, better um, situated when we have that sort of information and we're happy that we've been able to work with some of the other um, disciplines the, the folks at uh, the university and uh, the folks at the Large Lakes Observatory to help us uh, with this uh, project I guess and now it's more of a process than a project so we uh, have incorporated it into our management and and hope we can keep it there and I expect that it will continue to evolve as, as time goes on.